I'm Adam Moss, and this is Moss Models. Welcome back, folks. So today we're going to go over a few special functions, or specifically global special functions, that I find useful. I just got my new X20 Pro. I'm loving this radio, but that means I need to do a little bit of settle, setup. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go out to a simpler. Let's just go to one of my more basic models. Switch warning. And we'll go over to special functions. And you'll see I've got a couple uh, special functions here set up. I got our general reset. I got some dual rate callouts. And I got two alerts that are based around battery. Uh, this particular model is the first glow model I used with a LIFE um, receiver battery. So I've got a couple of battery critical setups. But I don't have three of my standard setups uh, on this. So, what we're going to do, see, it looks just a little bright here, so I'm, I'm going to just drop things a little bit. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better. Sorry about that. You should be able to see the, uh, the screen a touch better on this really, really uh, slick X20 Pro. That's the same screen as the X20, the X20S, and the lower screen on the XE, so um, well, there's a number of upgrades at this radio. The screen's not one of them. Um, and I'll do some more content on the X20 Pro later. This one we're focusing on special functions and specifically global special functions. Now global special function is a function you create for every model on the radio. Once you promote it to global and you can only do certain things, uh, it has to be something that could, Every aspect of the special function has to be global to uh, work. You cannot use flight modes to trigger a global special function. You cannot use logic switches, because those aren't global, those are model specific. You can use physical switches, you can use system values, not telemetry, telemetry is not global, but you can use system values. So the first one, and this is most important, straight up, write logs. Enable, always on, global. And this one is straight up logging. This means that if the radio is on, it's logging. I know some folks like to trigger their logs on throttle cut and something like that. That's cool. I don't have a problem with that. That actually makes a lot of sense for a lot of folks. Prevents log sprawl. I just do a global special function. You can see it's at the bottom here. The next time we load this, the globals will move to the top. And you can, you can also see that there is that G there. That specifies global. The next one I do is very simply, this is a play track. Enable. And I'm going to go down to system event and throttle cut. Now, and we're going to set this one to global and skip on startup. So this is going to play a track when the th system event throttle cut goes true. That is controlled by the throttle cut functionality in your throttle mixer. It only works off the CAN throttle mixer, but at this point the CAN throttle mixer is pretty good. And I'm just going to go pick a file. I have one I like. I guess I have a lot. And it's the ES3 MCD file. This is from Mike Shalim's RC, uh, ESOR plus template from rcsor.com uh, or sorry rc-sor.com it's a great template uh, I used it in open, the OpenTX days I use the his equivalent uh, ethos version he's got some ethos templates out for DLGs, slopers and F5J he doesn't have an F3J one but you can modify the F5J for F3J so this is, a, this is another critical one, and this is just straight up, Motor is not armed. When, my mo when my throttle cut is on, Motor is not armed. it goes, motor is not armed. Now I'm going to clone this, we're going to go in and edit, I'm going to long press, invert, and I'm going to pick the motor. And what I've done there is I've just said another one that when throttle cut is dis is not true, is going to play a different track. Motor active. Motor is 
And one thing I like about those two particular audio is they're not, they don't sound similar. It's motor active, motor is not armed. It's very clear which one you're, which state you're in. I don't use, I skip on startup because I set my pre-flight checks to make sure that the uh, throttle cut is in the right position before the RF goes live. And you can see I now have three and what we'll do is we're just going to go over here and we're just going to pick a random other model. And we're going to go over to special functions and there you can see they're already there. And now they're at the top. They'll always be at the top when you load a new model. These are global. These are radio level. One thing to note about global special functions, if you rely on them and you move the file to another radio, they don't come over in the model file. They, they're not infectious. They don't go over. They're radio level settings. So you got to, if you're using them like I am and you get a new radio, like I just did, you got to set them up again. So that's part of the new, the new radio setup is go in there, create any global uh, settings that you want, including your global special functions. Uh, because throttle cut is a system event, it's a valid global special function. So if you have a aircraft without throttle and without, uh, or using some sort of other throttle setup, uh, I do have one model on here where I'm using flight modes for throttle cut. It was a relatively early model. I programmed an Ethos, one of the first actually. And at the time I was on an X-20, it's an electric model. I wanted to repurpose that throttle trimmer for gain control. On, I had an SR-6, it's my RV-7 model, uh, the E-Flight Vans RV-7 um, with an SR-6. And that one was a case of I, I really needed that trimmer, uh, so I just set up a free mix for throttle, a lock mix for throttle cut, and flight mode trigger off flight modes, and that worked. That worked like a charm, but that won't trigger these, so you'd have to set up your own uh, model specific callouts for it. But it also it won't trigger these, so these don't get in the way. And there you have it. That's quick and easy. This is a quick and easy one.